AFTV DT, all smiles, all smiles. Um, 4-2. You know what? The only disappointing thing was the two. Mm. Even though you predicted 4-2 in the podcast. Um, so I don't know how you got that, managed to get that one right. But um, the only disappointing thing was the two goals that we can see. I mean, it was a great header. Mm. Um, but apart from that, that was a very, very good performance by Arsenal, wasn't it? Yeah. Do you know what? I think that once we got the fourth goal, I think everybody, even the fans, if you look at social media at that time, everybody's mind went Thursday. It just yeah. went Benfica. Game's done. Let's concentrate on them. Everyone was already making substitutes in their head. I was sitting there going, take him off, take him off, do this, do that. And you're lying if you weren't thinking the same. And then, like you said, it was a brilliant header. I feel that David Luiz got a little bit overpowered. I know it's difficult because the guy had a running start, which is why he I had a run really on like, start. He got a run on you. You know, this is the thing why mm. I don't really like the zonal side of things because yeah. you have a standing jump where they have a running jump. Um, and then I felt that we were very naive and caught out for the second goal. Bellerin watched him, you know, go mm. on his outside. And, um, and then when they went through and Bamford was you know, down in the box, I'm sitting there going, oh, no, he's given a penalty. He's going to give a penalty. And that, <laughs> the best way of describing that game is the scoreline does not reflect how dominant we were in that game. You mm. know, full credit to Leeds for never giving up, but we expected that. We could be 6-0 ahead and Leeds would still go. I watched Leeds against Manchester United at Old Trafford and they conceded six and they still kept going. So you've mm. got to expect that from them. And I just felt that with us, in that final 20 minutes, 15 minutes, was very good game management once it went to 4-2. I feel that the substitution of bringing El Nenny on was the right thing to do because it just steadied things down and sorted out that midfield area centrally where we were starting to get overrun. And um, yeah, the scoreline suggests a real close game but for 60 minutes Robbie it was anything but a close game it was a superb performance and mm. carrying on what has been a good couple of months for us <clears throat> you know we were disappointed with Aston Villa and the way we played and whatever but you look at the Wolves defeat we played so well then before that we've got victories and victories and the draw against Manchester United the performances have been really good over the last couple of months and more positive, mm. shall we say. And, um, yeah, we got the three points, and that's the most important thing. And, you know, yeah, going into yeah. Thursday. Yeah, and it's a, getting a Bamiyang back, um, you know, mm. on a, a hot streak. Um, this, the last two starts now he's had, he's scored five goals. Three yeah. today, two in that previous start he had before um, he had the problem with his mum. Mm -hmm. And he looked very sharp today. He looked back to his old self today. He did. And, you know, he could have got himself a fourth. That could have been another... Yeah, you know, Thierry yeah, Henry cool. against Leeds United. Do you remember when he scored four? Yeah. Um, you know, but he hit the woodwork. But what I liked with the first goal, for example, is that's what Abamian craves. The ball in front of him, so he doesn't have to stop. He doesn't have to take a touch or check or, you know, try and accelerate from a standing start. He can go at a defender in one movement. And the defender doesn't want Abamian running at him with pace few step overs, twist the defender up. And I think the goalkeeper thought he was going to do his usual, which is bend it to his left-hand yeah. side. And a family he just chopped across the ball and pull it near post. Brilliant goal. Penalty was superb. Um, you can't ask for more than that when you're taking the penalty. Hit the side netting. And mm. then um, did Emil smith Rowe mean the cross? I thought he did. I don't, I thought you know, he did. You'll have to ask him, but I don't <laughs> think any of us care. You know what I mean? Uh, if he did mean it, then that was genius in terms of the vision. Um, but yeah, look, it was the run off the shoulder of the defender. I think maybe six weeks or so ago, Aubameyang might have been standing still and the ball would have gone out for a goal kick or a throw-in. He wouldn't have been on his toes and anticipating. So he's definitely, you know, getting himself back to where we want him. And we've said it, if we're going to do anything in the Europa League, Robbie, we need a Bamiyang scoring. And, yeah. you know, I, I do think that playing in against European teams 
you know, might well suit us better than the physicality and the demands of the Premier League. Obviously, we're going to have to put that to the test on Thursday and we've got no tougher test for the round that we're in. Benfica. And, you know, there's going to be a few familiar faces there. But we've um, we've set ourselves up nicely to go into that game. That's the main yeah, thing. What did you make of the performance of Odegaard? I was quite impressed with him. I was Ooh. quite impressed that he lasted as long as he very, did. Very, ener very energetic as well. Very, it? very, very energetic. And, you know, it bodes well. At the end of the day, it was his first start. You know, mm. but what I liked was that he demanded the ball. He was, you know, demanding to be involved. He kept it simple. There was a few nice touches. There was a couple of moments where you like release it a bit quicker. But that will come. That's his first. He should have, he should have had a, He should have had an assist. Bellerin, but he played. He cushioned through a lovely ball for Bellerin, and then Bellerin's touch was just a bit too heavy. Yeah, but he should really have had an assist for that. It was a brilliant little ball. Yeah, it was brilliant. And, you know, that's the thing that frustrates me about Hector is that, you know, he scores a fantastic goal and you give him all the praise for the goal. But his job, ultimately, his job is to defend. Mm. And what he did on the, you know, second goal is just, it's not good enough, that kind of thing. And, you know, if we defend as silly as that against Benfica, we will get cut open. So mm. those are little things that we need to eradicate from our game. It'd be interesting to see whether Tierney is available for Thursday. It's sounding like he may well be. And then Arteta's got a selection headache on his hands. Does he go with Cedric or does he go with Bellerin? That would be the first time he's got to actually make that decision since, you know, Tierney's been out for a month. But overall, this is one of those games where you can easily lose against Leeds United because they're a side that attack... They're dangerous. They've got really good players. And, um, yeah, we've got the three points. And that's the most important thing at the end of the day. Really important to get those three points. One last thing. The the penalty that was overturned by VAR. Yeah. Uh, what did you make of that incident? Um, again, it's another inept, poor refereeing decision. You know, um, I wish the referee would have a pair of balls and actually stand by his original decision. Um, you know, you've got to put the blame solely on the VAR referee because he's the one who said, you need to go and look at that. I think you've got the wrong decision. But I can't understand anymore what is VAR being used for. We're being told by expert Peter Walton last week that VAR is not there to make the correct decision strange but those are his words and it's also only to be used if there's a clear and obvious error now i've watched the replay the referee has an unobstructed clear view of the incident he has deemed there to have been contact and a foul which there was which there was now where's the clear and obvious error here if a player was in front of him and he's kind of blindsided and trying to look round someone. And you can understand VAR saying, I think you might want to look at that. You may have just been a bit obstructed. You didn't see this. Or on the blind side, Saka's holding on to a player's shirt or whatever that you can't see. That for me is a clear and obvious because you need help in that situation. But this, the referee's made a decision. It should stay with his decision and it should be a penalty. And it just seems to happen. And coincidentally, it seems to happen to Saka. How many <laughs> times is Saka being brought down and we're getting nothing? And look at Saka's face. Before they even made the decision and they went to VAR, he's looking like, what? What are you on about? Why? And I'll tell you what, why don't you go and book him? If you don't get the penalty and you don't think he's been touched, go book him. Because clearly you think he's dived. So what is it? Go and book him then, you know? And then we're having to deal with the David Luiz situation. And then we're having to deal with this. And you're looking at what is a clear-cut penalty in their eyes mm. and what is not. So where does it, you know, where do we meet in between this now? Where? It's, something's got to be done about these referees. We know, and we've known for a long time, how poor these referees in this country are. Arsene Wenger called it years ago. He called it and he got in a lot of trouble for it. But he was right about it.
and people are starting to see it. The technology has now started to show just how poor these referees are. Before round, there was always an escape route. One look, it's a fast game, it's a difficult job. You can hold your hands up and say, we all make mistakes. You can only see it in one time. If only they had the benefit of a replay. Now they've got the benefit of the replays and they're still getting it wrong. Shows how poor they really are. But today, we can actually talk about the victory in the football and not a referee and ruin everything for us. BT, thanks very much. And uh, we move on to Thursday. Yeah, man.